I've wasted so much time and money to learn the lessons that I'm about to share with you today. I came from a small town in South Carolina. Got into filmmaking when I was in about ninth grade, got really obsessed with it, tried to make a movie every single year. And during my senior year, I made this film called Journey Bound that went on to win the best picture in one of the biggest high school film festivals in the world, the All-American High School Film Festival. It was one of the craziest times of my life. We were flown out to New York City. Our film got screened at the AMC Times Square in New York. We also got to screen in the Brooklyn King's Theater. So we got selected to screen our film at a festival in Japan. After that, I came back home. I started my own video production company. Everything was going well until I get this letter in the mail. And you know, how could I refuse? My Asian mom would kill me if I didn't go to UCLA. And plus, I was curious about what life in Hollywood could be like making movies. So I accepted and flew thousands of miles from my small town Fort Mill to the City of Stars. It was surreal. The cathedral-like buildings, the beautiful campus, huge facilities. I began to imagine all the great things that I'd be working on and all the great people I'd meet. But to my slight disappointment, the film department was in a little old building in the absolute furthest corner of campus. But you know, I was hopeful. I didn't want to judge my college experience just by its cover. But a few weeks in, the excitement started to fade and reality began to be very clear. I started to realize that film school wasn't exactly what I thought it was. It seemed like everybody around me was really only interested in two things, sex and drinking. Everybody just wanted to party, everybody was living for, for, you know, living for the weekend, living for the Friday night. And I was like, you know, where are all the people that are excited and as passionate about filmmaking as I am? You know, where's the people that are working on projects all night? And it seemed like no one else really shared that passion that I had for filmmaking and and you know, very soon, I started to feel really lonely, and that loneliness later turned into depression. I retreated into my own world. Things got so bad that I didn't even leave my room to go to class, and I started to drown away my problems in video games. Meanwhile, I was draining $63,000 a year, going into debt that I'm still paying off to this day. And one night I got so fed up with everything that I almost joined the US Army, but that's for another video. I felt like I had made a huge mistake and I was going to go into debt for it and it just felt like there was no way out of the situation now. Things were feeling pretty hopeless until one day I get a call. A close filmmaking friend of mine from South Carolina wanted to fly me out into the middle of the Arizona desert to shoot a short film. The only problem was that it was during finals week and if I decided to film that movie in Arizona, I would have to essentially fail all of my classes for that semester. But you know what? I said, screw it. You know, film school wasn't really doing it for me, so why not? So I flew down to Arizona and then became a part of what I consider to be some of the greatest film work that I've ever done. Arizona was life-changing and the most difficult but most rewarding project of my life and college had nothing to do with it. It was then that I realized I have to drop out. College wasn't really teaching me anything. All it was was sinking me deeper and deeper into debt and depression. I was a square peg in a round hole. I dropped out and I decided to carve my own way and go my own path. And during COVID, I decided to dabble in other mediums like music, game design, app development, which were sort of more in line with what I actually want to do, which is to create these sort of products and experiences and share them with people. I wanted to share this story because I felt like I wasted so much time and money and I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did. If you're interested in filmmaking, I would say that there are two sort of generic paths you can take. There's one of the sort of videographer content creator route and the, the other route is like big production, filmmaking, commercials, things like that. So if you want to make content and do videography stuff, do not go to film school. That really is going to be a waste of your time and money. Just find people around your area that are really passionate and interested in the same things that you are and work with those people to 
push out those visions and those dreams that you have. Making content at film school is really the last thing that you're going to be doing. You're going to be focusing on a lot of theory, you're going to be critiquing movies, you're going to be studying old films, things like that. It's rare in film school where you have a concept for something and you're turning that into a reality. That's not really how it works. I would say just do whatever side gigs you can to help pay the bills and the rest of the time just work on trying to bring your ideas to life. That's what I would do. Because think about it, $63,000 a year that you have to pay to get not really knowledge, but connections with other people. Whatever it is, just make content, post it online, YouTube videos, music videos. And you know, there's already a ton of tutorials and content that will help you achieve this. Okay, so if you wanna get into big feature film productions, I still wouldn't recommend going to film school. The reason for that is one, nobody cares about your degree. That's not what's gonna get you onto a set. What really matters is the connections and your portfolio. And essentially, people that go to film school are really trying to attain those two things, or at least trying to gain the skills to get those things. So here's what I recommend you do. Okay, so like if you don't know anybody, what you should do is just walk into your local film department or move to a city with a well-known film department like LA, New York, Vancouver, Atlanta. Walk in there and tell people that you want to work for free, you want to help out on their short films, you'll work as anything, a PA, you'll work as grip, you'll work as second AC, whatever it is just to get your foot in the door. And trust me, people are needing this type of work all the time. You don't even need to prove that you're a student. Just pretend that you are. You can also join groups on the internet, you know, Reddit, you know, get creative, use the internet. Once you're actually working on a film set, in one month, you will learn more about big productions than you will four years at film school. You will learn more about how film productions are run. You will learn about the industry. You will learn what it really is like to work on set. You'll meet people, you get to develop skills, and you'll also get a taste for the industry. And you may find out that it's not what you expected. It's long hours, it's little pay, it's working in really harsh conditions. You know, maybe you'll figure out like I did that working in the industry specifically isn't really what you want to do. Or maybe you figure out that that is exactly what you want to do and that's the route that you want to pursue and that's all great. A lot of these things won't become clear until you actually start working on set, which is why like don't go to film school first. If anything, just try to work on a, a local set or a local short film first, see what it's like, and then you can see if you want to commit to film school and pay, you know, $60,000, $70,000 a year. Now, if you do this route, you may not get the sort of theory side of filmmaking that going to film school is actually very helpful for. And if you want to develop those skills, I would recommend just watching movies every day, taking notes on them, reading scripts, writing your own scripts, getting feedback on that. And I think that will take care of the film theory part of things. Now, don't get me wrong, film school is still a great place to meet people. And you know, I had some great memories at film school as well. But is it really worth $63,000 a year when you could get those things for free with just a little bit more proactivity? I feel like the only reason that you should go to film school is if you have the money, you want a sort of safer bet, you know, you're gonna get a degree out of it as well, you're gonna meet people, you're sort of forced to do things. If you're not so keen on forcing yourself and motivating yourself to do a lot of these things, then film school can be a really great place to sort of force you to do those things. Or if you just wanna live the college life for a while and see what it's like and, you know, experience your youth. And, you know, that's important and great too, that something that I got out of school that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise, and that I'm thankful for that experience as well. But if you just have a burning passion for film, you have ideas, you have visions, and you wanna make them a reality, just focus on that. Do everything in your power to do that thing, to bring these visions to life. I'm not so sure how much film school is going to help you do those things. Just remember that everything that you need is around you right now. We have the internet. That's what I realized when I dropped out. Anyways, that was just a real quick overview of my entire film journey. If you have any more questions about certain topics that I sort of glanced over, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll, I'd love to take a look at it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.